Another way we can calculate the change in enthalpy or the heat of a reaction would be to use Hess's law. So assume that we are trying to find the enthalpy change for this given reaction and we could use the heats of formation from the back of the book and take products minus reactants to calculate that but an another thing that does work is to take equations that you have heats of formation for and rearrange those equations so that you end up with the equation of interest. So we're looking for, uh, we're using an alternate way to find the heat of form or the heat of this reaction. So if we looked in the back of the book for the formation of HCl gas, since that's an element and that's an element, those heats of formation will be zero and one mole of HCl gas would end up being half this number. And again, since this is also the formation of a compound from the elements, if I were to cut this reaction in half, this value cut in half would be the heat of formation of one mole of liquid water from its elements. And what we're going to do here is treat this like a puzzle and we're going to manipulate these equations so that we obtain this equation. And whatever we do to the equation, we also do to the heat value. So for example, if we double this reaction, so if I take two times this entire reaction, I have twice as much hydrogen, twice as much chlorine gas. I'll make twice as much hydrogen chloride gas and that will give off twice as much heat. So we're going to use that uh, concept. Also if a reaction runs in reverse, if we reverse the products and the reactants, the sign will change. So what I'm going to do is look for a formula below where I've got hydrogen chloride gas and I want to have four moles of hydrogen chloride gas on the reactant side. If I look at this equation, I've got two moles of hydrogen chloride on the product side. So if I multiply this equation by two and then reverse the sign of delta H because I want the hydrogen chloride to be a reactant. So I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by 2 and that's going to give me 4 HCLs on the left. I'm going to keep my arrows lined up and then that's going to give me 2 hydrogen molecules and 2 chloride molecules on the right. 2, two chlorines. And since I doubled this recipe and I reversed the order I'm going to double this value and change the sign. So the delta H value for this reaction will be positive. Let's just do that on the calculator. 2 times 184.6. So if we do that, we double that value, change the sign, we'll have a positive 369.2 kilojoules. And the whole purpose for doing that was to obtain four moles of hydrogen chloride gas on the left. And there's a variety of ways um, to get to the correct answer. Generally, I just look at what is here. For example, now I need two waters on the right. So I'm going to look down here. And this equation, I've got two waters on the product side, so I'm just going to rewrite this equation down below. The whole purpose is to make sure that I am obtaining the exact number of moles in the balanced equation that I'm interested in. So I'll rewrite this equation. Two hydrogens, I'm leaving off the states just to have less of a mess. Two hydrogens plus an oxygen is going to make two 
waters, so the delta H for that reaction, I'm just going to rewrite that number, 571.7 kilojoules. And from here, what we're going to do is add these two equations together. So if I add the two equations together, whatever appears on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side can be canceled. And when I cancel what I've got on both sides, then I'm left with 4HCl plus O2, making two water molecules, or two moles of water and two moles of chlorine. And so I'm going to do the same thing with the delta H values, add those. So the 369.2 is still in the calculator. I'm going to subtract. 571.7. So the delta H value for this particular reaction is negative 202.5 kilojoules. Now in all reality there would be no reason to go through this much trouble if we had values to look at from the back of the book. So we could do a quick check using the heats of formation from the back of the book and see that we'll get the same answer. So if we'll keep that there. So if I just use products minus reactants and I calculate this from the appendix, if I have two moles of water, that's going to be two times negative 285.83, that's the heat of formation for liquid water, minus four times the heat of formation for hydrogen chloride. So I've got to look that one up, and that value, the value for hydrogen chloride from the back of the book, if I focus that, oh there it goes, is negative 92.3, so that's for the hydrogen chloride in the gas phase, which is different than the hydrochloric acid aqueous. So that's negative 92.3, negative 92.3, and then if I just do that math there, 2 times negative 285.83, I better check that number. I've got water memorized because it's in so many. Yeah, that is correct. So 285.83, and then a negative times a negative is a plus. Plus 4 times 92.3. So if we do that on the calculator, we still get the same value, negative 202 kilojoules, that we calculated using Hess's law. And that is the beauty of thermodynamic quantities is that no matter how you come up with the answer, it should be the same because it's a state function and that just means that the value depends on the initial state and the final state. Okay. So Hess's law will come in handy uh, for other things. So I think of this like having solving equations, two equations and two unknowns when we're, where we eliminate one of the variables. So it's similar to that.